Model steam engines top tip time part 79. This episode is quite interesting because I do one particular job that did not go as planned. So near the end of the video I changed direction and you will see what I did. It's worth waiting for. This is an old Stuart boiler and I'm fitting old Stuart fittings to it. First of all I'm going to show in detail how to fit the water gauge. When I first bought this boiler it didn't have a Stuart water gauge fitted but luckily in my parts box I had one. So the first part of this video is showing how I fit the water gauge. And even though it looks like a simple job it's not as simple as you think. As you see the water gauge at the moment the fittings are just loosely screwed into the back head. After wiping away some PTFE tape residue with my finger I removed the top fitting. The previous water gauge was fitted into the boiler bushes using PTFE tape, but I don't use that. The first part that I need to add to the water gauge is the piece of glass tubing. Here I'm checking that the glass tube is the right size for the fitting. I don't use PTFE tape, I use Loctite 542, and here's the 542 being applied to the threads. To make sure that the bottom fitting was in the correct position when tightened, I needed to use a washer, and I didn't have a copper one. Luckily though I had a brand new aluminium washer. The cathodic corrosion of the aluminium washer is a very slow process and seen as now it's covered in Loctite 542 I really don't think this is going to be a problem. The next thing to do and one of the most important things to do is to check the alignment of the fittings with the glass in place. You have to be very careful when you do this otherwise you will smash the glass. I'm holding the other end of the glass with my left hand and moving it about. And the idea of this is to make sure that it's perfectly centralised in the lower fitting. Don't forget that when the boiler's in steam, the metal is going to expand. So as the bottom fitting expands, if it's not perfectly aligned with the glass, it will fracture the glass. So if you're fitting a water gauge, as always, take your time with it. And don't forget that the bottom water gauge fitting and the top water gauge fitting are small working models within themselves, and therefore should be treated as such. And don't forget to check the position of the top fitting, because that is also in this case out of line. The top fitting doesn't need a washer. Now this could be a problem because the bottom fitting with a washer is slightly further out than the top, but it's such an infinitesimal amount it really doesn't matter. I've applied some Loctite 542 to the threads, which will seal them perfectly. I use my Barco spanner to tighten the top fitting, followed by checking that the glass is still aligned perfectly. It's not really touching the sides of either the top or the bottom fitting. I noticed that the bottom fitting was not 100% aligned with the top one. So once again, with the Barco spanner, a quick tweak, a very tiny amount, and now the glass fits perfectly. The next thing to do is to cut the glass to size. A while back I bought a special glass cutting tool designed to cut water gauge glasses, and it worked very well, I did a video about it, then I promptly lost it. So I'm back to the old method. First of all I score the glass with a needle file and then I use once again dare I say it my barco spanner to grip the glass and just snap it off clean. A quick health and safety advisory when doing this job wear eye protection and don't cut your fingers. The water gauge is not going to offer a good seal just rattling about down the middle of the fittings so I'm using an o-ring. I found this o-ring in a box with the water gauges but I'm not too thrilled with the way it's looking, it's very difficult to fit, it only just fits inside the nut and it's a little bit small. I don't think this o-ring originally came from a Stuart water gauge, but if it works that's okay, if it doesn't work I'll use an alternative method. The sequence is push the glass tube through the top fitting and immediately press on an o-ring, then put the top nut in place, push the glass a bit further down, put the bottom nut in place and then fit the second o-ring. Then push the glass down all the way into the bottom fitting and tighten the nuts. But don't over tighten the nuts, if you do that you will still break the glass. I now need to fit the top cap, which I'm doing, complete with its copper washer and a bit of Loctite 542, followed by fitting the blowdown valve. And apart from being coated in Loctite 542, this blowdown valve also has a copper washer on it. It's a 3 16 thread and it's a 3 16 copper washer. And all I need to do now is move the valve into the correct position. 
Don't apply too much pressure to the drain cock because you will distort it and then it will leak. A good way of doing it is to use the nut at the bottom, tighten it fully and then continue rotating the nut which will tighten the valve in place. And that's the water gauge blowdown valve fitted. These type of drain cocks really look good. They're not quite as efficient as a rotary tap, but they look the part. This type of drain cock is a very simple device. A tapered plug in a tapered hole. And there's a small hole in the middle of it to let the water out once the handle is turned to the correct position. This is a very old drain cock that I found in a box in the workshop and the ravages of time and line scale from the water and bits of grit have taken their toll on it. I'll enlarge the image so you can see how badly scored the plug is. The socket is going to be equally badly scored. What I'm going to show in this video is an attempted repair. I'm going to relap the plug into the socket and I'm using T-cut for this. T-cut is an abrasive compound normally used on motor vehicles for restoring the paint colour. And what I'm doing here is applying some T-cut to the plug. And with the help of the T-cut, this should polish both of the surfaces. But it's not making much of an impression, so I'm going to try some of this. This is valve grinding paste for grinding car valves in on cylinder heads. In the tin there are two grades, fine and coarse. This is the fine stuff. I'm also mixing it with some more T-cut. And after the first intense rotation of the plug, it's starting to look a little bit better. But it needs a bit more yet. So more tea cut and repeat the procedure again and again and again. I don't want to leave a lot of grinding compound inside the hole, so I'm flushing it out now and again with some machine oil. A few observations about doing this job. Initially, I was going to use a taper reamer in the hole. I've done this before, but with limited success. These drain cocks are very, very small indeed. Don't forget you're looking at this highly magnified. If you look at the size of my fingers, you get some idea how small this part is. I once used a taper reamer on a dribbling drain cock hole, and it did a good job, except that then the plug fell through the hole, but never mind. I'm going to finish this operation with some Brasso. This is Brasso wadding, which contains a very, very fine abrasive, and hopefully this should get some kind of a seal. The plug part of the taper is looking quite good. I assume that the socket part of the taper is looking equally as good. I'm going to flush it a few more times with the machine oil. I've done this kind of job quite a lot in the past. Sometimes it's successful, sometimes it isn't. But this particular drain cock was dripping like a running tap. The drain cocks on my small locomotive that I run round the garden now and again are slightly different to this. They don't have the fancy handle, and there is a spring at the end where the nut is, which holds the taper plug in place. After relapping this particular taper plug and socket, which was very badly scored, now it's a rattle fit. Can you see this? It's moving back and forth. This is no good. So the answer is to use a washer, but I didn't have any washers the right size. The video on screen shows how I got round that. I filed out the centre of a very small brass washer using a needle file, and now I'm cleaning it up on a piece of wet and dry sandpaper. It's always important to remove burrs. Burrs can get in the way. In this case, if I don't remove the burr, when I tighten the nut in no time at all, the burr is going to wear away and it will be slack again. Now it's time to fit this washer, followed by the washer with the square centre, followed by the nut to hold everything in place. But first, a little machine oil. I tightened the small nut just the correct amount. Not too tight and not too slack. And now it's time to test the drain cock. Using compressed air, I pumped up the boiler to just under blowing off pressure, which is about 65 psi, and the drain cock is leaking. It's not leaking very much at all, and maybe with water it would be slightly better, but leaking nevertheless. I put some oil on, and this is showing me that it's not 100% tight. I did have my doubts right at the beginning because this drain cock was very badly worn, so I removed it and put it back in the box where I found it in the first place. Then I tried a selection of other drain cocks, but none of them looked right or they didn't fit. So then I had an idea. First of all, I fitted a blanking plug in place of the drain cock. I removed the small blanking plug at the front of the lower part of the water gauge. And I looked at the clack valve. I'd fitted a drain cock to this when it didn't really need it, I just didn't have a small blanking plug. 
but now, courtesy of the lower part of the water gauge, I have a blanking plug that can be fitted into the clack valve. So I did just that. Here's me fitting the small blanking plug into the clack valve. And here I'm using my barco spanner to carefully fit the blanking plug into the clack valve. So now, as you can see, the clack valve has a blanking plug and the water gauge has a drain cock. And this drain cock doesn't dribble in the slightest. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.